it's Carolyn from Mommy Ramblings, and I'm here to show you some different things and ways that you can decoupage. We're going to decoupage a glass plate, we're going to use a heat method to decoupage a birdhouse, and so much more. But before we get started, let me tell you about today's sponsor of this video, Traffic Puzzle. It's a really fun and exciting game, and you can download and try it yourself with the link in our video description. Traffic Puzzle is a free-to-play mobile game where cars match three and puzzles meet. An evil force has made a massive mess on the streets, and there's only one person who can clear them. You. You're going to have to take your match three puzzle-solving skills to the next level, combine them with your quick thinking, and save that city. Traffic Puzzle features adorable characters challenging puzzles, prepare to pick your brain, to remove cars and obstacles from the levels in the most efficient way. You have to watch directions, you have to be sharp. Traffic Puzzle lets you clear the roads by matching three cars of the same color. You can assist police cars, fire trucks, and ambulances, and help them get to their destinations, help helicopters and trains get through a block. Make the city more beautiful by planting grass and ensure people aren't late for work by freeing up those trams. Enjoy an ever-growing collection of unique levels. Explore a wonderful cartoonish world with a fun storyline. Kick back and relax when solving match three block puzzles by clearing cars. Play by yourself or with your kids. Train your brain and compete against other players in the leaderboards. Traffic Puzzle offers new frequent events with fresh gameplay mechanics from removing tires from the streets to clearing airfield from the cars left unattended You'll never get bored playing Traffic Puzzle. Why don't you check it out for yourself? Download it and play today using the link in our video description. Let me know what you think of the game in the comments. I think you're going to love it. I'm from Mommy Ramblings, and I'm going to show you how to decoupage a glass plate. If you're not familiar with our channel, we do a little bit of everything around here, but we have an emphasis on true crime, we do a lot of crafts, decoupage is one of my favorites, and um, we even have auctions, live auctions. So if you're not subscribed to us, I urge you to click the subscribe button in the lower corner of the video, and then you'll be notified every time we go live or upload a video. So today I'm going to show you how to decoupage a glass plate. Now I do all kinds of decoupage. I do a decoupage on shells, um, like these oyster shells, and I do decoupage on cans and on spaghetti sauce jars, and I have all kinds of videos in my decoupage playlist, so you might want to take a look at that if this is something that interests you. But I don't think I've ever shown you how to decoupage on the glass plate. So let's take a look at that. Now you can get these glass plates at the Dollar Tree, and what you want to do is, which I've already done, is just clean it with alcohol. That way you get any residue and you make sure your plate is nice and clean. Okay, now I know a lot of people use Mod Podge for this and you could if you want to. I usually use a um, napkin decoupage, which um, that one I don't have here. There's one by DecoArt and there's also one by, it's, I believe it's a, it's in a little um, jar, okay? But this one is also very good. This is Aileen's. And I just find that it works better with napkins because sometimes decoupage can be a little too thick. So what I'm going to do is turn my plate over onto my work surface here. And then I'm going to use a wide brush like this, okay? And before we do that, you've got to pick out your napkin, okay? It's going to be a reverse decoupage, so the good side is going to go into the plate like this when we put it on, okay? but we have to remove the layers of the napkin. I always say this, whoever invented decoupage, and please excuse my fingers, I have paint all over me, I've been painting, and it just had to really be a boom leader because everybody must have said, wait, you're gonna put liquid on a napkin and wait, then you're gonna you know, take the layers off? That's crazy, right? But thankfully they didn't listen to any of the naysayers because this is nothing short of magic to me. So you peel away, you can use some tape if you want to do it, but make sure you've taken it down 
And you would think it's like really gonna tear or cut. I don't think I've ever torn a napkin pulling away layers, which is another really magical thing. So you have these and you can save these. You can even print your own designs on these. I know that sounds crazy too. Okay, let me get um, some of my tape here because I wanted to show you how you can check for the layer if your layer is Okay, so if you're unsure, always check. If you don't have like the package to know if it was a three ply or a two ply napkin, always check. Now this should be a three ply because I can do, I, you can get to tell, but sometimes, believe it or not, you think it's not and it is. Okay, so this one is, and there we've got it. The tape pulls up that layer. So then you're gonna wanna pull that So you've got another layer. Okay, put that over there. Now, just wanna make sure that my corner got, okay. All right, so remember that we're going to put this this way, okay? And another friend of yours is going to be saran wrap. If you don't have saran wrap, you can use your hand in a Ziploc bag. Saran wrap is really good. Sometimes you can just wrap the whole plate or a curved surface. And I've done that on like small egg-shaped ornaments. And then you can really just pull it taut and squeeze it out. Uh, I mean, smooth it out, I'm sorry. Hold on, let me see, I'm trying to get this. This is saran wrap here, wants to. So what I'm saying is like, when you have this napkin on, you can go here and then like, pull it taut if you want it to, or you can put your finger in it. And I'm just gonna put that there because you said, so the first thing we're gonna do is try to see what it would look like. So if we take our napkin, so we see our positioning, and the, this is a really good pattern to use because we've got that little duck that we can kind of make sure he's in the center and then that's, you know, that'll look nice for an Easter plate. So we can start, some people put it all over and then go, but I think if you start with the center and then you can lift up and put it on the sides, it's gonna be easier to manage. So what I'm going to do now is take whatever decoupage medium you're using and now usually I'll go right over the napkin, when the napkin is one ply like that, the decoupage medium will go right through it. But I need a little, I wanna make sure this is super smooth and I have the ability to just tack it down. Now I'm going to try to get this, not going in, I wanna go all in the same direction with this. And I want to smooth out any of this, okay, around the edge. We're going to put plenty on the top. So I just want a light layer just because I don't want to have like streaks running through, you know what I mean? This is just kind of to tack it into place. Let me get it nice and smooth and then we're going to put it on mostly through the top. Now remember... Okay. Uh, where's my brush? 
there she go. Okay, so then what you do with a light coat of Mod Podge that uh, ended up putting on the back there. You go on the top. And this is much easier to work with because you can turn it. So I, I, I know I switched on you, but this will be much easier way that I just show you. And I've put much less Mod Podge on the plate. And so it's just like, just barely tacky before and not a whole bunch. And I just find it much easier. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure that I have enough of this on and then I'm going to start smoothing this. Go in one direction. If you're brand new to Nakhman Decoupage, I would not suggest a glass plate for your first thing. It's a little more challenging, unless you have a very small one. I would do one of, you should check out my playlist of shells or jars, which are much easier. Or if you were going to do a glass plate, you could do it, not the whole napkin. You could um, do certain like flowers or cutout pieces, which are easier to work with, which I'll show you in another video. People do these glass bowls and strips, and they're amazing. So I'll try to get as much down with my brush of the wrinkles as I can before I go in with the saran wrap. Always make sure you have Mod Podge on there. You don't want it dry. All right, now. Need more Mod Podge there. Wrinkle out, especially in something like this, but you want to get it flat so that you don't have air bubbles. See how that just came out there? That's what you want, and you're not really going to notice if you if you do a good job of doing that. And like I said, it might even. So you just want to make sure that you're not having air bubbles; that it's completely on your plate. Cleaned up that wrinkle there just by kind of gently going in different ways.
So we have our glass plate here. It's dry. I'm going to trim down the edges of this, of the napkin, just with a scissor. And I'm just going to do that now quickly. And so I'm just going to trim right along the edge as my guide with my little detail scissors. And you can see now that the napkin, it's very, very transparent. And I think it would look better if there was a white behind it. So what I'm going to do is add white paint to the back of the shell and you're going to the back of the plate, I'm sorry. And you're going to see how it's really going to make it pop, but you can do whatever you like. It's all up to you. Okay, so I finished trimming up the plate and you see it's very translucent. You can leave it like that if you like, but you see how it looks better when the white comes through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it and I think it's really going to make that plate pop. So I'm just going to place it down and paint that. Okay, I'm just applying a white paint to the back of the plate and I'm just going to give it one or two coats and you'll see what a transformation this is going to make. Okay, we're going to do the iron-on method. So we're going to put a layer of Mod Podge or whatever decoupage medium that you use on the back, on the front of this wood plaque. And that's what we're going to do right now. Just put this on and we're going to let it dry because this is the iron-on method. And you might like this if you're doing like wood plaques like this. Okay, so watch. What we're going to do is make sure you have this on well. And then you can even brush it in the opposite direction. And when it dries, you can even come back and give it another coat. Okay, so the plate is done. It looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it looks good. You could put cookies on the top because it's glass. You wouldn't want to submerge this in water, but there is a waterproof Mod Podge that's supposed to make things uh, waterproof that you can do that. I've never used it, so I'm not gonna speak for that, but I'm just gonna use this as a decoration. And for that, it's great. If you wanna use it to put cookies on with people, you would make sure to tell them that you can't submerge it unless you do um, tell them unless you do use the waterproof sealer and then it then you could so i'm going to show you how to display this on these little easels and then you could put even some beatrix potter bunnies or things that would make it really fun and cute so you see how nice that looks i could put those guys there of course i got to take the tickets off or if you have other ones that you want to put there you get the idea it would look really super cute right so that's the one DIY is the plate. We're gonna do the iron decoupage. Let's go to that. Okay, so I think I'm gonna to try to put this one on. And for some reason this napkin looks like it got wet and wrinkled, but that would be the perfect one to use then for an iron decoupage. So I'm going to see how that that looks good, but I'd like to pull it down a little more, see if I can get a little bit more of those purple flowers in. And that would be perfect. So I'm going to trim out that panel first so it's easier to work with. So get a piece of parchment paper. Like that, okay. I'm just gonna cut it so it's easier to work with. Just 
gonna put this jar on this so it holds that in place for a minute. Let me get my iron. Okay, so I made a big goof up here. I did not remove the two plies of the napkin, which is a major goof. You're going to see that it adheres and it looks, you know, it adheres to the plaque. And then when I go to apply the varnish, the Mod Podge, the decoupage on the top, I'm noticing that it starts to wrinkle. And that's when it dawns on me that, oh my gosh, I did not take the other plies off. See, a lot of times you might think, oh, if I have more plies on it, it's going to be sturdier, it's going to work better and set here better. No, it doesn't. It, if you are ever decoupaging and you're noticing like, it's just, you'll get to see that, wait, something is wrong. I guarantee you have not removed all the plies. And that may be because you think something is a two layer napkin and it's really a three layer napkin. I um, saw a whole tutorial on decoupage by a woman that didn't know you had to remove the layers and all of her stuff was coming out like crap, <laughs> okay? And in the comments, people were saying, you know, you should really need to remove the layers, but she went through the whole thing and she was probably just so frustrated, right? Um, I, you know, I can't imagine she thought it was going good, but continued on with the video, good sport that she was, not knowing that she had to remove the layers. Now, I'm gonna show you how you could take this from an absolute fail. So I am have this on a warm setting. I actually had to put it on a little bit of a higher setting, is what I found out. It doesn't have to be just warm. And so I moved it towards the cotton setting, but it wasn't like burning hot. Anyway, when I took the parchment off, I was like, oh, okay, look, this adhered. I'm just gonna put the, um, you know, the Mod Podge on the top and everything is gonna be great. And you'll see what's going to happen next. I want you to be aware of that, but I am gonna show you another um, iron on, but this one, we still savaged it. So watch. Okay, so I'm thinking like, oh great, it's it adhered. Now I'm just gonna trim off the edges and start to apply the Mod Podge on there, okay? And watch what happens. It doesn't go so well. And it's because I realized that the, top, the bottom two layers of the napkin have not been removed. So let's see that fiasco. Eureka, this is when I start to realize something is wrong. Something's not working right. The wrinkles are, come. there's wrinkles. What's going on? Either this method truly sucks or there's something wrong. Oh no, there you have it. Now I realize, oh no, the layers have not been removed. Whatever shall we do? But we persevere. I'm going to see if I can remove the layer without damaging the rest of the napkin. I do. So then, wonderful. I get the layer off. The napkin is still okay. And believe it or not, it came off with the two layers. So I still had to remove the other layer. Now, this will show you like with a wet transfer, that top layer of that napkin is still okay, not ripped, not torn. I remove the one off the bottom as best I can, and then I'm going to lay this one back down on it. I'm doing this with one hand, and Okay, now I lay it back down on there. Just 
gently tap it on and we still salvaged it but we really didn't show the iron on method so what I'm going to do to what I'm going to do for you is do another thing now I had a birdhouse sitting in front of me so I decided to the roof was primed put some the decoupage medium on it and try the iron on with that so let me just skip you ahead to that because this will just be the glazing and the trimming of this and this is you know the decoupage but we still managed to save that Okay, so I'm finishing this bunny by Mod Podging it completely. And next I'm going to put this, again, this decoupage medium, whichever kind you use, onto the birdhouse roof and then let that dry in anticipation of another try at the heat method decoupage, the iron method. A little time so I have this wooden birdhouse that I'll do a heat transfer on this side. I wasn't really sure which I was going to do and I don't even know that I'm going to be able to do a heat transfer on this side I'm thinking because I've got to put the parchment well I guess I could tape the parchment that way yeah Okay, we'll try it. So I'm going to put this Mod Podge on while we do something else. We go in two directions. And like I said, probably ideal to have two coats, but this one's going to have one. Okay, so let's put that over there. And we're going to do a shell which is an oyster shell. These come natural. You can varnish the back, but they're natural oysters. Now, I saw something really amazing. Somebody was making Santas out of these, making white, let me see. And that guy would make a perfect Santa. Some of them have faces to make Santas. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. I wanna show you, you can do all kinds of shells. You can do like this kind, and what you can do with these two, with the fans, is display them like that. And this is one I made for a friend. And I'll show you. Yeah, you can see that. Look how cute that is, isn't it? I think I'll send her a little easel like that when I send that to her. It's so pretty to get that out this week. By the time you're watching it, it's probably already out. And then I've got this little one. Look how cute. Aren't they pretty? But the oyster shells make cute little trinket dishes. And like, here's some that I've done. Okay, and I'm going to this space a little bit. I'm going to save this parchment for more uh, heat transfer. Okay, but I'm going to pull it away. A little bit messy. Away. And what we'll do is I've also made these small little ones. Okay, and I have lots of videos on them. And these, which are more like ornament size, or you could put those. What I'm doing with these is I'm putting these on the table at people's spaces for Easter and letting them take them home. Okay. And this one, 
Okay. And this one is a perfect little trinket type dish. So these are a little bigger. These are from South Carolina. And uh, a lot of them look nice in the blue and white. So we're going to do this one here. Okay. Let's, let me get a napkin. So I painted the inside of the shell just with some white paint because sometimes they have um, where the oyster, they have like a black spot. You want to do that because it'll show through your napkin. Okay. And let's see. We're going to want to... figure out what we want to do. So here we have like three boats here. That would be three. And then one on the end. I think I can, let's see. If I get that one in there. And we could grab these. Let me put this brush down. These three here on the bottom. I think I want to do them upright. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is, hold on, because I'm... I'm going to see... And make this somehow work. So if we go there, what about if we put this boat in? Hold on. Let me see. If we do this boat here, this boat here. Okay, I think it's going to be easier if we. these in pieces. Wondering if we do it like that. That might be good. And then let's see if we can put these guys on the bottom. Those guys are too big. So we need like a smaller boat. Let's see if we have a small boat that would fit on the bottom. I know I have another napkin that's got a small boat. Let's see. Maybe we should do it like that and just go in with some white or we could take I have some with a nautical rope. Um, maybe we should just take another shell over here and do that, which would work. So it's all about, you know, finding the right shell and then we gild it with gold. Um, I'm just not feeling, I'm just not feeling that. I just don't feel like it's popping up for me, so. Um, I know what I want to do. I want to use this napkin. 
I want to use these topiaries. So I'm going to come over here and get into a space where I'm going to get both color pots. On this side they have, okay, so I'm going to cut a piece of this, I'm going to put that in there, so I'm going to take off the layers, okay, and see, so you might think that's one layer, take your tape, I, I can usually see, even now, that's two, but see how you can see, the tape will tell you, okay, so, I'm going to kind of position it, I think I'm going to want it like that, so what's easiest, if you just now, on this shells, I put it on the backing, you just even to tack it so that you can get it in there with your finger, and it still allows you to pick it up if it's not positioned exactly the way you want it and it lets you put and don't put it on the whole thing because this way you can really maneuver it because shells have lots of nooks and crannies and again here you don't worry about the wrinkles on the shell you try to get you know that try to get it down but like that you know some of it's going to be inevitable but you you'll be able to smooth it out or you won't even see it okay and then then as I come around that corner I'm going to hold that and put some over here to just tack it. Okay, and then I'm gonna go over the top with the Mod Podge and get all the way to the edges. And we'll trim up the excess, don't worry about that. We're going to trim it with gold anyway. Try to go over the corners so that you know it's adhering to the corners. Sometimes I don't even use a brush. I use saran wrap in my fingers to really make sure that I'm in all the nooks and crannies of the shell. Okay, so you have that, right? Okay. Now, I just... You don't want any pooling Mod Podge. Now let me just go with the Saran Wrap and smooth that. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. Okay, so we have our birdhouse roof, which I put the decoupage medium on, and it's dried. Didn't let it dry even that long, but it's dried to the touch. I picked out my napkin, that blue flowered one, right there. I've cut it to just overlap a little bit. I've got my piece of parchment paper ready. I have my iron ready, 
and we're going to try this. Okay, so here we go. I've got holding my parchment, I'm getting my iron, and like I said, I'm going to just press it with the parchment paper. And we'll heat up that medium behind it and stick that napkin to it. And you see how it's already working. It's a little bit of an awkward piece, but it will work. And we're just going to get the whole piece ironed. Okay. Like I said, I've got it you know, going up towards the cotton setting, so it's not that it's so just warm, but it's not burning hot, you know, that it's burning the paper. And I'm being careful and testing it out. This is, again, the first time I'm using this method. And then I take a look at it. And you know what? I figure that's good enough for me. It's adhered nicely. It looks nice. And the overlapping... That's fine. We're going to trim that up at the end. I'm just pulling out. There was a piece of uh, Mod Podge that kind of came out or something, and it was like it was dried, so like a piece of dried glue. So I was pulling that off. But other than that, very nice. There's a little area I want to go over there just to make sure that's totally adhered. But after that, we're good to go. Yes. Beautiful. Very happy with that. Then you're just going to go over the top with the Mod Podge as you would, and then trim up the sides and the so I'm Mod Podging or I keep calling it Mod Podge no matter what kind of medium I use but I'm also you know um using the saran wrap that's your best friend just to smooth out that decoupage medium and to just smooth out make sure that the napkin is nice and smooth so I'm still using that saran wrap on that. And again, using that medium, I'm going over the edges and I'm just gonna continue putting a good coat on that. As I go along. And then I'm going to let it dry. So put that over there and back to our shell, which is drying. And then given right now, I can trim off a little bit of this. It's hanging off the shell there. Okay, what I'm going to do is just seal the sides that I just cut with this, just to make sure that they lay down. And it's going to, you know, I'm going to seal the back of this anyway, so I'm just going to go around the sides and make sure that those sides that I cut, you can see right there, I'm going to make sure that that gets down there. Do that. What if I did these up here? That. Do I like that? I think I might like that. So let me put this one on the bottom. I'm gonna trim a little bit here. I'm gonna take that point off the top. And so we can always paint some of those blue lines 
anywhere there's a gap. I'm going to peel the layers off. And so I will take this, just lightly drag that down. That like that, and then that's all. To, I'm not even going to tack that one down because it's, it seems to just stay right where I want it. These dry so much nicer. You might think, oh, and then when you trim them with the gold, they're beautiful. They make such nice gifts. Okay. So pretty, isn't it? How nice those. See how they look when they're nice. Trim, they're beautiful. Texture, I don't know if it's because like underneath when it's iron, that, but it's really very nice. Um, see what I mean about the texture? It's not wrinkles, but it's a, it's a texture. Looks really nice. I do like it. It was very, uh, fast and very easy. Okay, now with our oyster shells. They have dried, look how pretty they are. Okay, we've got that one and we've got this one. And to finish them off, we're gonna need some gold paint. Okay, and we're gonna add some gold paint. So I'm gonna have this birdhouse bag. All right, and we're gonna get our gold paint. This. You can find a link in the video description if you'd like to try this. And I also use a folk art one too, that's very good. Okay. Put this on the sides. And you can make it as thick as you want. On these sides, I usually cover it and then I come back and go in here so that you can see it from the top. Oops, I'm not letting it, sorry. And sometimes I fill in this whole thing up here and sometimes I don't. I'll see like that. That's what I mean. But I think I will in here. And you can put a clear varnish or even a Mod Podge on the back and it makes the shell still natural because a, a lot of people like the natural, but it helps it. It just looks nice and it feels nice. Because you have the Mod Podge, if you come in too wide, you can just um, clean it up. Okay, so that's one. Hold on, you're not seeing that. Let me move this one up. Okay, and now we'll do this one with the gold.
And this one will definitely need a second coat. But there you have it. So you have our shells, our plate, and our birdhouse. What are you watching?